Welcome to the film cast review of Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I'm going to read the plot summary of this movie from the internet. Three generations of the Dietz family return home to Winter River after an unexpected family tragedy, end quote. I'm David Chen here with Devinder Harder and Jeff Kanata. Uh, we recently reviewed Beetlejuice for the film cast After Dark. You should check that out. It was really a lot of fun to revisit that movie. Uh, it's a movie that we all kind of largely enjoyed, despite some of the things having aged pretty poorly. Uh, but that said, Jeff Kanata, you've expressed opinions on legacy sequels and reboots and stuff in the past and how they often are a, a game of diminishing returns. I'm really curious what you thought about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Well, Dave, I guess you could say what I thought about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is best summed up in the form of a limerick. Oh, let's hear it, Jeff. The sequel's a truly insane trip back inside Tim Burton's brain. Though some stuff's repeating, O'Hara and Keaton are great. You can say that again. <laughs> so you say that again like, the, uh, the like, like the Soul Train joke. Jeff. Again. Yeah. 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 So, so the title, as you say it again. In the yeah. Title. Nailed it. Um, I, <laughs> if I had to make a binary thumbs up or thumbs down review on this movie, I would thumbs up it. it I eventually ended up having a, a good time. I think the second half to last third of this movie, because of how just utterly bonkers it gets, made me enjoy the experience and think it worthwhile. And it, it really is goofy fun like the first one eventually. I think it starts really bad. And I was very worried as it began about where we were headed with this one. But it just slowly like goes off the rails and usually when I say it goes off the rails, that's a bad thing. In this case, going off the rails is what saved this movie uh -huh. because the going off the rails is where the fun exists in a Beetlejuice movie. And, you know, there is a lot of stuff here that I don't think works very well. There are too many characters in this movie, too many characters, and many of them could be excised from the film entirely and you would not notice it. Uh, and it's a, a strange thing. That's not just one character, several characters uh, where their entire subplot just doesn't mean anything. And is kind of, we spend a lot of time yeah. working on it and nothing comes of it. And it's yeah. just kind of like, what, why, what, why was that even in the movie? Yes. Um, it felt like they had like a lot of ideas. Yes. For mm -hmm. oh, what if Beetlejuice? Did? And actually, if you read, you know, about the history of of uh, Beetlejuice and kind of the the sequel ideas that originally came forth for it, you know, this is a sequel to a movie that came out decades ago, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. there was originally going to be uh, Beetlejuice in Love. That was a movie that was right. written in 1990. There was going to be. Uh, one where that, that took place at the Eiffel Tower and so on and so forth. Um, there is going to be a sequel called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. You know, that was going <laughs> to be. Could have seen that uh, one, right? right. And, and so it's basically like there are, that. All these ideas for Beetlejuice, none of them obviously came to pass, but it felt like they had a bunch of ideas. And and it's like it goes in the movie. Like put it in the movie. Well, it felt like Hawaii they went, here. Yeah. yeah, we have we got one shot at this. Yes. <laughs> so let's just let's do just it put, all. Put it all in the movie. Put it all in the yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter that we haven't developed out any of these subplots. Yeah, to to their conclusion, like it, it, it's really strange and makes for a a not entirely satisfying experience. Yes, uh, and profoundly that's a shame. unsatisfying, I would argue. But <laughs> well, <yes. laughs> I ended up just having so much fun by the end that, like, mm -hmm. I kind of walked out feeling that was that was a goofy fun time, and I'm not going to hold all those flaws, of which there are many, against it because the th stuff that it gets right is really fun but it does have some lega sequel issues where it feels like it needs to fan service you uh to a certain point the the shrunken head guy is this movie's stay puffed marshmallow man sure yeah and it really bothered me it really bothered me like that's a one-off gag that works in the first movie that doesn't mean we need to have a parade in the same way that the 
Ghostbusters Afterlife had yeah. all the, all the Stay Puft Marshmallow. They became friends, it. Jeff. They were in that waiting room for, for decades. Uh, they became it's friends. so Come frustrating. On. Yeah, yeah. But and, and there is other stuff like that in this where it's like, hey, member berries. And it, I, what I liked most about this movie is when it broke new ground, went to new places. And it does. To its credit, it does. It does a lot of new stuff. It 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 in, adds to the mythology in some fun ways. It takes us to places we haven't been before. And you know, I was I was grooving and having a good time and it's like there aren't very many movies that do what this does, which mm-hmm. is just like go bonkers and you know, give you weird imagery and and kind of be scary but also be silly and and have a musical numbers and like it's ultimately a fun time and ultimately like I just like hanging out with Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice and Catherine O'Hara uh, as this character uh, and you know and Winona Ryder to a lesser extent but uh, you know it, it is fun to revisit this world and have it be wacky again the movie could have been a lot better mm-hmm. but I still had a good time Devinder Hardware what did you think of Beetlejuice Beetlejuice I, I think a long time ago, I relegated myself to thinking like this will never match the original Beetlejuice, the movie that I loved. Go check out our review. I, I've watched it so many times growing up. Like it always meant something to me. That movie is special. And I think this movie is just merely fun. I actually, I had a lot of fun with it too. Um, it is a mess script wise. Like clearly, yeah, subplots, characters, stuff that goes nowhere. But where it matters is am I, am I being entertained on a visceral level, at least uh, for you know, large chunks of it. There are things I found really, really funny. I think, first of all, Janet Ortega, of course, belongs like within the Burton wheelhouse. Like after Wednesday, she's clearly like a Burton person. Um, But, you know, I love things like this movie will go off and be an Italian Giallo movie for five minutes, you know, and just like, just go do that. And Monica Bellucci is just, uh, you know, stalking the film, uh, murdering people left and right. I don't actually care too much if it like, concludes properly i think just the fun of seeing her like uh, there was a great sequence where she's literally stapling herself together in like a frankenstein-esque sequence like that's that's just fun it's just silly and also also nice flex by tim burton who could be like i'm currently sleeping with this woman she's in my movie she is my new boo um stuff like that like there's a lot of like great imagination all throughout i love how um justin thoreau brings the la sleaze into this universe, whereas the first movie was New York sleaze. So now you've got Justin Theroux being the Hollywood guy. He's got the, got the little ponytail being a, just a little shit. You know, just absolute little shit. And I find that hilarious, like just how silly he can be. And I love when he can like kind of go off and just be a little dumb. Um, you know, it, it's stuff like that. And then, yeah, towards the middle half and towards the end, like, yes, then it can be fully unleashed and go fully wild and give us a dance sequence. It can never match the first Beetlejuice, which I think is a special movie. But also that first Beetlejuice is not a conventional movie. It's also kind of messy too, like in the way it's put together and the way like certain things go down. So I like that this is not just your stereotypical legacy sequel. um, And also that it did have room to breathe and be weird and be silly by the end too. So yeah, I had fun with it. I got to see it with my wife too, who's also a Beetlejuice fan and she, you know, she enjoyed it. So could be better, but I still had fun. To this movie's credit, I think one of the things that it does really well is the visuals. We talked about this in our Beetlejuice conversation Mm -hmm. about how, oh, well, today they would never do this stuff practically. And I think a lot of it either was done practically or looks like it was done practically. You know, for Mm -hmm. instance, uh, Willem Dafoe's skull. His yeah. skull is all messed up, and it's like it looks bad. It doesn't looks look, cartoonish. It doesn't look great, but it's yeah. like you know. I think purposefully so. It's very stylized. Oh, right? he's having so much fun in this movie. I loved him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But but uh, so uh, visually, I, I was very impressed by the movie, and I think if you're going to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, to kind of rekindle some of the feelings you had mm-hmm. when you watched the original Beetlejuice, uh, I think you will actually get some of those feelings back, um, and, and, and so. In terms of accomplishing that, it succeeds. But I kind of agree with Jeff. Like, I, I think I like this movie the least out of all three of us, uh, purely for a script perspective. I just think you can't have that many subplots that go nowhere, that go on forever. Like, that just like so much time is spent 
spinning these wheels and building up to nothing that ever happens. Um, and I, I would be more okay with it if it was like a vibes movie, but there's like a lot of plot in the movie too. You there's know, a lot it's of like good vibes though. Like it's the vibes is what I'm digging with it. But yeah, you know, it's, it's not just like we're hanging out with these people. It's like, Hey, we all have to do this mission, you know, because for things I'm not going to get into, like there's a mission that needs to happen. And it's like, uh, I I wanted there to be that moment where oh it all it, it all makes sense why you're like introducing all these characters in this way mm-hmm. and it all pays off at the end and that never came really um, so just from from a script level I don't think it succeeds I I will say a couple of other things I did like about it though um, for me honestly Jeff you were bringing up like Catherine O'Hara and Michael Keaton for me it was the Winona Ryder of it all that made this kind of worth it for me. Mm-hmm. Because basically you're seeing an actor who everyone loves at two really different phases of her career and of her talents uh, from the original Beetlejuice until now, basically. Right. Michael Keaton, he can still do the same thing he did back then. It's a, the makeup. Like it doesn't matter what his yeah, age is. No, qu- really. no yeah. question. He can still deliver and still as charismatic as that character was, he still is that today. But the Winona Ryder, it's like, oh, wow. It's it's rare to be able to see like a, uh, mm-hmm. a, an actor kind of evolve in front of you. And we, here we see like this character and this actor at two really different points in their life. And uh, I, I, I thought there was some value in that. So. I do think this movie kind of kind of hurts the Lydia Dee's character, though. Like, that's I, agree the, I think that. it kills that character was so cool and strong and spunky in the first movie, and by this one, she's uh, she's a shell of herself. And I guess well, that's yeah. part of the story, it's, but it feels unfair. Yeah, it's that thing that I've pointed out before. This mm-hmm. time, f- on a, a a woman, which is you have to be a deadbeat parent. Yeah, if you're doing a legacy sequel. And we you check back in with you. You're going to be a deadbeat parent, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I don't understand why that has to be a trope. I don't why. why do, I guess. Blame Spielberg, I guess. Like it's, it's, it's a lot. It's the of only it. conflict we can come up with for a new generation is right. that they have to hate their parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, because basically in, in these movies, like Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny and this, well, actually not Dial of De- Destiny because <laughs> Mutt died off screen. Died. <laughs> but, but, uh, but you know, like it, it's basically like, uh, Hey, we need to, through the adventure that we're going to go on, re- reconcile and repair our bonds together. Right. That's kind of. Right. But uh, it's such a tired, like Axel yeah. Foley and. Yes. Axel Foley. Go, that's the one, it goes yeah. on and on and on. And it's like, okay, can't we come up with a different way to make the generational thing interesting? I think Can't they can. like each other? Can't they have like a different sort of, I, there's so many other ways yes. you go down. And I feel like the choices made here ultimately weaken the Lydia Dee's character up till the end. Like she, it, it's a shame. It's a damn shame. All right. Well, shall we get into spoilers yes. uh, and talk about what exactly you mean by that? All right, here we go. Spoilers for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, starting right now. All right, we're in spoilers for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Let's dive more into the Lydia Dietz of it all. Uh, Devendra, what are you saying? Like, let, let's let's elaborate a little bit more. Like, I what, mean, she, why do you she think is, this movie kind of kills her character? She is literally powerless throughout this entire movie. Like, she's doing this show, which um, she seems like she wants to do, but she's also being manipulated by this little shithead and who she doesn't really want to be in a relationship with. And when presented, you know, it's the whole marriage thing. It's like he's he's clearly not great for her like there's a lot of things and she just kind of she's very passive i think throughout this entire movie and that is the sort of thing where i'm like that that really wasn't the lydia we know and i know things can change but it just feels like screenwriting shorthand it's sort of like oh your kid you know you have a bad relationship with your kid so now we to fix that that's a good conflict for a sequel or whatever um it feels like they didn't they didn't really do much with her character. Like it just really wore her down. Catherine O'Hara's character is killing it. Like she's doing great. (laughs) She's, she's like uh, doing good art stuff. Her husband dies, but you know, beyond that, like she gets to shine and she, she was not the hero of Beetlejuice. She was in fact, one of the villains for part of Beetlejuice. So (laughs) I, it it felt weird to me to put the actual lead of Beetlejuice in a really shitty situation, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, did you have any other thoughts on the Lydia Deeds character? No, I actually agree with a lot of what Devendra said. I, I, I think that um, it's unfortunate because there doesn't seem to, she seems stuck in this weird yeah. paradigm that doesn't even feel authentic to her. And like, like if she was, she's not even enthusiastic about anything in her life. There's mm-hmm. nothing she's wants. What does she want? What does she want? 
Simple question. Yeah, good question. Yeah. <laughs> good Screenwriting one hundred and one. Yeah, yeah. Was like, good, good she's question. like, she kind of doesn't want to be in this relationship, but mm. she doesn't really we de- take yeah. any action towards it. You we know? definitely know the things that she's not super yeah. into. Yeah, but you know, I don't know what she's I, into. I, I in my head, I was like, well, that's easy, Jeff. And then <laughs> I, had, I had nothing. <laughs> and I think that does affect a lot of characters. Like, I, right. I like Jenna Ortega's character too, but it's like, what does she want other than to not be tied to, you know, her mom, who is like a supernatural type of person? So uh, at least she has spunk, though. At least she has like energy to her. And it's stuff like that where I feel like the script is all over the place, but some of the filmmaking stuff too, where I'm like, okay, we're doing the same pan basically over the Connecticut city, except now instead of like one smooth helicopter shot, you're, you're chopping it up. They're chopping right? it up. Ch- it doesn't feel they chopped it up. doesn't feel as transportive. <laughs> doesn't feel as like, Oh, I'm on for this ride. I'm going to the Beetlejuice world and yeah. we have drones. Now we have so <laughs> many ways to get that shot. You don't yeah. even have to chop it up anymore. Yeah. To be fair, I think the movie overall like looks, it looks fine. pretty good. It it yeah. looks like it retains the kind of spirit of the original in a good way. Why uh, does the house look like it did at the beginning of the first Beetlejuice and not like it did at the end of Beetlejuice? Did they remodel <laughs> it back to the original yeah, design? They undo, which you they don't think they would, because Catherine O'Hara is still art lady. Yeah, I, guess. I will say the uh, house covered by a shroud cool. is like a really so rad. Cool. Really that cool should be the look. poster. Really. So rad. What it's like, cool... why don't we see that more often? Oh, because it would be like extremely logistically challenging to pull something oh, like that off. Oh, it would off. be nearly impossible. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to get that much fabric. Yeah. Uh, but it looks amazing. Uh, Incredible. Looks amazing. Oh, that is on the poster. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah Surrounded yeah. by all the yeah, characters. Yeah. That is, that is a iconic image. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, totally. Yeah. Super cool. And I uh, love, uh, I also love the look of um, the, uh, the inhale squishing mm-hmm. of people. Yep. Uh-huh, Danny DeVito uh-huh. getting squished and so and, uh, disturbing. Others. So good. Okay, yeah. so they're like, I, I I have to mention it. Just I, I don't want to talk about this topic, but <laughs> I have to mention it. Mm-hmm. Tim Burton has been criticized for how rarely he includes non-white people in his movies. Now, yeah. to be fair, you know, um, uh, Jenna Ortega and the the actor who plays her father, you know, uh, are are not white, and also, um, you know, there's other non white characters in this movie as well. But th- when I saw the Asian dude show up, and he was running a laundry like a dry cleaners, and also murdered like three minutes after he showed up, I was like, it feels like. <laughs> Feels like th- Tim Burton's idea of how it's fifty years ago. Non white people re- should yeah. be in movies is like from the eighties. Still, all like, his references are all from his the references 70s and are 80s. from decades ago. Yeah. So it's just like what? But okay, the dude makes a hundred million dollar opening weekend movie, so I guess he gets to do whatever he wants. But I was just like, I, I happen mm-hmm. to love the Soul Train, but it was a very weird. Th- I just it's love. A, it's a weird joke. It's a weird joke in but the it's year twenty twenty four. I don't mind. Yeah. You know what? That's not. That's not for me to speak on. But point being, well, li- one off of his line. But point the- being, there have been very few of them. And then so when one shows up in this week, I'm like, oh, an Asian dude. Oh, he runs a dry cleaner. Oh, he speaks with the kind of a funny accent. Oh, he gets killed immediately after he's introduced. Um, so it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess it's better than nothing. No, actually, it's not better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that part of this movie. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have to say about that. We don't need to talk about it again. Um, but Should we uh, enumerate all of the people in this movie, all the characters in this movie that didn't need to be in the movie at all? Yes, please, sure. Jeff. Hit us. Hit us. I mean, the, the, the boyfriend that's trying to uh, trick her. Mm-hmm. Nothing yeah. comes of that. The, the, it's the Willem Dafoe of it all that really. Willem Dafoe me. makes me actually angry. Yes, really agreed. Really, agreed. yes, because so much time uh, is put for into what and and this character, you know, and like, yeah, because yeah. he's having a blast. Come, I don't okay. know. Like I, I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed watching him. Like just do basically be like a TV detective, except he was just a TV detective. He was never a real cop. He's a pretend cop, right? Being a real cop. In the, the in the afterlife, goes on it's yeah. no, one joke. The yeah. character goes on no emotional journey during the movie. Like that's and yeah. serves basically no plot function in the movie, right? And so it's yes. like, why why are we spending so much time with this character? If it's we the remove same, and the, it's boyfriend. the same joke over mm-hmm. and over again. If yes. we remove the boyfriend though, and it was just more about the Monica Bellucci like going off murdering people, and it was about that investigation, maybe he'd be more important. But I, like I think the, Monica Bellucci's wasted. Yeah, in, absolutely. In I think you know she does not 
get much to say at right. all. But the portion she's in, that whole like uh, Giallo sequence I thought was really funny. And her just like literally just being like a slasher villain, just like walking around it, murdering people. Yes, it but it's a, it, yeah. it seems like it's building to something. Sure, yes, sure. it doesn't. Which it is I not. agree. I yes. agree. It does not build to anything. But I think yes. the buildup itself was was fun for me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's I like the the, 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 the Willem Dafoe stuff. I was like, oh, was th- this is going somewhere because it's uh, all the mo- scenes of him like practicing. I will say one of the things I like though. Mm-hmm. We didn't mention this in our Beetlejuice review, mm-hmm. but one of the kind of offhanded references that I think Otho makes in Beetlejuice one is there is a, a a myth or a rumor that if you commit um, suicide, commit suicide, yeah. you become a civil servant yep. in the afterlife. And the lady at the reception and the lady at the reception yeah. has shows yeah. that she has like yeah. slit her wrist. All of the civil servants. Uh, but yeah, are but that's suicide. I believe that's true of this movie as well. Like yeah. all of the people in this movie ended up there because of something they that they did to themselves or that happened to themselves. Yeah. So did her father um, kill himself? With I the piranhas? Know, he got evidently eaten by piranhas. He got eaten by piranhas, but he's also a civil servant. <laughs> so is the Venn diagram not all civil servants are, are suicide? Well, I, I guess it's like he did something that he did. All these people did if something If you want to get angry him. about something, get angry about that character. Because that is the motivation <laughs> for both Lydia Dietz and her daughter, who just kind of pops up. No, like, I hey, agree. I, that guy I'm in not, the desk. That's dad. It is hey, weird I'm that there's no not flashbacks. I'm angry about that, Devendra. <laughs> yeah. It is weird that there's know. like no flashbacks or anything with that guy. It's just, yeah. there, it's it's so much telling and not showing. So the yeah. whole relationship happens off screen, right? I, I think the also, point, yeah. if you are a fish that kills a person, you are doomed for eternity to be attached <laughs> to that person somehow. <laughs> It's a fish's life. Don't try I to work know. out the logic of the afterlife stuff too Did much. Did the fish die when he died? <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing, like we were talking about which characters are useless. I agree. Not everybody gets their full time to shine. It really is the boyfriend character though. Because even in the first movie, we never had the issue of like, who's Lydia going to date? This is Beetlejuice. We got we got bigger <laughs> things to worry about, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think like if you took that character and that entire weird plot line out and just made about search for the father, reconnect the mother and the daughter, like right. that's simple. I, I agree. I you agree. With you. Totally like, agree. There's so yeah. many yes. subplots, but that said, that was the one subplot that worked the most for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> was was what? the psych, was the psycho boyfriend was um, no. okay be- Hated because it. it's a cool Hated it's it. a cool idea of Jenna Ortega has been skeptical this whole time. Sure, sure. Right, and then it's like, oh, actually, one of the people she's been interacting with is um, is dead. I actually thought Jenna Ortega was gonna be the one that died because mm. she crashes into the tree like, yes. when she's riding her bike, and yes. I'm like, oh, everything after this point, she's dead because also she didn't interact with anyone that wasn't her mom for a while, and then mm-hmm. she started talking with Catherine O'Hara, and I was like, okay, that theory is wrong. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> also, but wait, I was like, wait, oh, wait, 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 I think um, this is the faintest praise possible, but this movie could have just repeated the same beats from the first movie, and it didn't do that. That is I the agree thing. With that. Yeah, no, that I is the thing that. you hate the most, Dave. How dare you say that? No, he's complimenting it for no, not saying, doing that. Yeah. I'm saying to its credit. It yeah. Oh, to its credit. I I'm, saying, I'm saying yes, it tried to do a bunch of other stuff that didn't work, but at, at least, least it didn't, didn't just repeat the same. Hundred percent agree. I agree. Hundred percent agree that yes. it was yes. it was forging new territory. Yeah. In a clumsy way, but still. none of it, none of it worked at all. In my opinion. <laughs> Not a Some single thing worked. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask you guys this because I think one thing it tried to do that the original did is the whole dance sequence. And yes. I know some people like it and Burton, like said, they improv most of it too. So it wasn't like fully choreographed. I thought it felt forced. Yeah. Did not, did not love. I mean, the, yeah. the original, so the original dance sequence, there's, two, there's two dance sequences, yeah. right? There's one yeah. at the, at the dinner. Uh, and then there was one at the end of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. And both of them are awesome, in my opinion, in the original. Yeah. And great this songs, one was, great energy. Yeah, yeah. great. And th- this one was like, oh, uh, it's kind of like they're they're doing the thing from the first movie, but it does it doesn't have the magic. And Tim Burton's like, do you remember? Do you guys remember this one weird song from the seventies that actually fits fully? <laughs> into, like, it's, right? I don't think the the song is as good as the songs they chose for the original. Yeah, you know, it's like, not catchy it's, at all. I, don't know, I had fun with it. Yeah. I liked it. It's yeah. fun seeing people dance. Like it's fun seeing them dance around and be silly. But it's like, yeah, there was no surprise there because we were just kind of waiting for that moment. So yeah. Uh, all right. 
Anything also, else? Also, I don't, uh, I mean, this is nitpicky, I guess. Uh-huh, but yes. we'll, we're not, well in that zone now. We are. <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing. We get sort of a Beetlejuice origin story, but there's nothing in his origin that explains why he's special. Why mm-hmm. he gets to do what he can do and no one else yeah. can do it. He's so dastardly. He's a grave robber. Yeah. yeah. That's not how an origin yeah. works. It, like is it, the idea that yeah, so the idea is that Beetlejuice used to be a human, right? Is that kind yeah. of he was a grave robber. Right. Mm-hmm. And who died. Yeah. 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 But like why does he why, why special? Is he, yeah. Why why so is you, he you wanted the complete Beetlejuice right. origin? That would why, that well, could why be does why does mm-hmm. saying his name three times make right. him appear? Why does yeah. Why can he do things yeah. that? Why is he scary to all the other, po, you know, dead people? I, I, I'm actually kind of glad it didn't go down that route too, because that's the other explain it all thing that a legacy sequel will, will kind of do. Like, what was the origin of his hat or something? Yeah, which we've seen no, too I, many I, movies do. I right, hear yeah. you, but yeah, I feel yeah. like then don't do any. Like, why? Mm-hmm. Why are you going to tell me this bit that doesn't really matter? That bit also ties into, hey, in the first movie, he does refer to like, hey, I was married once. I've got this ring. And yeah. I do like that we we at least get, oh, I, as a kid throughout my entire life, I'm like, what the hell was up with that? He just had, <laughs> he had a ring and he was married once. Who would marry Beetlejuice? Turns out somebody <laughs> crazier than him, essentially. Like that, those bits work for me because, uh, you know, it's Monica Bellucci and Elsa. I think they were just having fun for those parts of the movie. And why was she all in parts and boxes in the afterlife? Like, that I think doesn't... he did that to stop her. Uh, yeah. From, <laughs> yeah. To, to for getting to him. I don't know. I don't know. I do want to shout out um, a person you've ever seen is a Tim Burton character. Mr. Burn Gorman. We've talked about Mr. Burn mm. Gorman before. You watch that face. I'm like, that guy needs to be in the Tim Burton movie yeah. at some point. And he's here. He's the priest. He's, he's great right. in the 30 seconds in which he speaks during the yes. movie. Um, yes. But yeah, like, like many things, could they, they, they could have built the, the movie around that character if they wanted mm-hmm. to, right? Like, But they didn't do that because they had 18 other things they wanted to do. The, the, uh, the big thing we need to mention, which I yeah, absolutely yes. love this movie for, is the mm-hmm. Jeffrey Jones of it all. Yeah, so for, for those <laughs> Which, who don't know, it's for those so... who don't know, Jeffrey Jones is an actor who played the Lydia, uh, uh, Dietz, Lydia Dietz's father in Charles. the original Beater mm-hmm. Juice. Uh, he has since uh, been a sex offender, and so mm-hmm. therefore was not invited back to uh, be in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And the I think way they deal with it is they kill him off. What I enjoy, Jeff, is they found numerous ways of not showing... Well, Jeffrey Jones. It's it's yeah. brilliant because it, it seems like a meta textual comment on yes. what a jerk this guy is yes. and what an ass. Like it is, it feels like the movie is trying to punish that character or pu- punish that actor by yeah. way of his character. You know, right? Uh, because the way she describes him dying is like three awful things. Like it's it's, <laughs> it's it's that jo- it's like the aristocrats where it just right. keeps getting wor- like he what. You think he's going to die like this. That's not bad enough. Then if you think this is going to happen, that's not bad enough. And then he, a shark eats his torso, you know? And then so we have this wonderful, like, he's in the mm-hmm. movie, but his top half is gone. His picture is still there, though. They do refer to his yeah. picture a few times. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you yeah, still yeah. see his and face. I, yeah. And I thought the, uh, the sort of stop motion look of the flashback was really cool. Random. But I was like, okay, random. Yeah. There's, sure. no other, there's no Let's other go. sequences that looks like that in the yeah. movie. But it's like, okay, all right, I guess. Yeah. Why not? I, don't, uh, I loved that. It, it felt like it was acknowledging, like, this guy's an asshole. Watch what we're going to do to his character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, like, I did think yeah. it was a little odd to build the whole movie around yes. that character's that death. That character like, dying. Because he could have died decades ago in the right. universe yes. of the movie. Right? It could have been about Catherine yeah. Harris' character dying, a character we kind of like from the first movie. You right. know, like... I also tie it all together, people. Come on. I do agree with that. Like the having his death be a moment in the movie felt dumb because now we we're not allowed to even mourn it. I mean, she can't mourn it. It's a weird. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. a lot of weird stuff. What are we supposed to feel about? Like we we can't feel like oh, I really miss that guy. You know, we can't. We're not supposed to feel that way. So Mm -hmm. it's 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 odd. Um, you know, speaking of people that were or were not supposed to be in the movie, uh, the Maitlands. There, There was originally a cameo. For the Maitlands written into this movie. Yeah. Uh, the writer, uh, Alfred Goh, who wrote, who was one of the co writers of the screenplay, also uh, wrote Wednesday uh, for mm-hmm. Netflix. Um, 
he talked about how there's a reason like cameo. I'll just quote from Entertainment Weekly here. Quote, it's funny with the Maitlands because we asked him and we went back and forth. There was a version where they just showed up at the end, but the problem is they're ghosts. So they kind of needed to look like they were 35, which was never going to happen. I think Tim felt and Miles and I agreed that their story had been told. So how mm-hmm. do we move on from that? Um, uh, the first movie is really about the Maitlands. It was really Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis' movie for a good portion. They're the protagonists who called Beetlejuice against the Deep families. So he said he really wanted to focus on them. He wasn't interested in doing fan service or being slavish. So I think it was very much about how do we tell the next iteration of the story? End quote. I um, also think there were comments that he didn't want to mess with AI, like AI uh, making them younger. So he didn't want to deal with that either. That's a thing everyone's doing these days too. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, that's the one. That's the one thing that I was like, okay, if you're gonna be a legacy, yeah. the thing is, we've seen so many of these now, right? So many of these legacy sequels that I'm like, when are we, when are the people from the last movie gonna show? I thought like post credits something, but it's, it's well, cool. I I also had the same thought about like they can't look like Alec Baldwin and Gina yeah. Davis now, yeah, and so you know that's tough. But the hard thing is that the first Beetlejuice movie ends with them being very much a part of the Deets ongoing life and to have them just sort of you know if you're a ghost you're not going anywhere you know what i mean it's it's one here's the thing one line here's what's so weird about this movie is it makes references to all these major plot points that feel like a screenwriter just wrote oh we'll explain this later and then never did so for instance for instance uh winona Ryder's character says oh yeah uh we figured out a loophole to get them out of here yeah they figured out a loophole that's it Nothing, no wrong. other explanation. There's another line where Catherine O'Hara is speaking to uh, Winona Ryder and she says, uh, didn't we used to hate each other? Oh, yeah, but we started liking each other a while ago. Yeah. That, yeah. No, no mm-hmm. other explanation. You know, it's like, yeah. it, it, always, there's all these things. It always where it's reminds like, me of that movie, yeah. Thank You for Smoking, where, mm-hmm. um, oh, uh, what's his name? God. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Eckhart? Eckhart? No, the other, the other very the other handsome man who's in that movie, uh, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, thank you. Mm-hmm. Rob Lowe has that great thing where he's the executive, and they're, you know, they're talking about the script. He's like, "Well, what doesn't work? Does this doesn't work in space?" And he's like, "Oh, we'll just write a line where it says, yeah, you know, right." They figured out technology. Literally like, oh, yeah. where, where did the maintenance go? We'll just write a line that said we figured yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay. I mean, I get like having that happen like one time is fine in a movie, but like yeah. it just feels like. Between that and how chaotic the rest of the script is, it feels like this was just very haphazardly thrown together. In my, I mean, mind. again, yeah. chaos feels befitting of a Beetlejuice movie. So, like, <laughs> I, I was ready for a certain amount of chaos, but uh, yeah. I, I think somebody also mentioned that uh, it is kind of sad. Like the the basic timeline that the Maitlands were stuck on too. Like they were going to be stuck in that house for 135 years. So part of the thinking too was like we could just give them give them a win, let them get out of here you know, earlier or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that was part of the reasoning from what I've read. Mm, Right. Like we don't want to think about the Maitland still being stuck here against the Yeah. For way past, uh, you know, the deets is all die too. Like that's just sad. That's a weird way to end the movie. Indeed. All right. Any other thoughts on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Or shall we wrap it up there? All good. Uh, It's fine. You know, (laughs) it's fine. The guys, the guys liked it. I did not like it. Do you think we're getting uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? After I mean, this probably box after how after how this yeah. movie did. Yeah. Yeah. I we didn't talk about the ending, ending, ending with mm-hmm. like the the new heart ending. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Oh, the, like, the Beetlejuice baby is terrifying. Yeah. Good God. Oh, That's yeah. a few yeah. huge checking. I have to say, by the way, there. by the way, some of the stuff in this movie goes really hard. Yes. Like, yes. When, yes. when when Winona Ryder first meets Beetlejuice for the first time again, mm-hmm. and they like, I think he like cuts a baby out of her belly no the baby just pops out or it just, po- it just pops like, or, no, her he belly her swells pregnant. up yeah. and yeah. then like evil Beetlejuice baby comes out it's like yeah or, or and he doesn't yeah. he open up his, his own belly at some point and like yes. all these he all shows all his innards come out yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, like it's a joke he says uh, um, what does he say something like uh, that was to Justin Thoreau yeah all the Spill my guts. Spill, spill my guts. guts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Spill I'm my just guts. saying, if I'd seen that with like, if I was a kid, if I'd seen that when I was a kid, I'd have like nightmares. Yes. Yeah, the first horrifying. movie had some pretty hard stuff too. So, yeah. right, right. But I think yeah. I think it actually it's it's actually worse in this movie. This is because even it looks yeah. more realistic. Yeah, well, uh, that's true. Yeah, the reason I thought of it right now, you know, in relation to the question I just asked about the third film, is that I was in the having the experience of 
oh my gosh, they're basically writing themselves into a place of not being able to do a third movie because they're yeah. doing the six feet under ending yeah. of just like pushing, you know, fast forwarding through the right. timeline. And, right. And then it's like, nope, it was all a dream. <laughs> that was the new yeah, one. That middle juice baby is out there somewhere. So. Yeah. Yeah, she wakes up twice, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, right? She yeah. wakes up and then Beetlejuice is next to her and wakes up again and Beetlejuice isn't, so. Yeah. But yeah, I do like how at the end of the movie, they're just like, oh, you made a promise? Um, none of it matters. So it's like, okay, that's, that's <laughs> Whatever, about how seriously whatever. I'm going to take this movie as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Anyway, that's our thoughts on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And at the end of the day, it is still really impressive that Tim Burton made a movie. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash filmpodcast where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.